Okay, so what we're going to be doing today, guys, is skew boreholes, and it comes from the DCG Solutions Workbook, page 21. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all read the question, talk you through it, and then a little bit of an explanation on boreholes before we get into the actual doing of the question. So for question one, page 21, DCG Solutions Workbook, uh, it says, The two skew boreholes shown have been used to investigate a valuable mineral, valuable mineral stratum underground. So the borehole at A, which is this hole here, which drills down here at this angle, hits the head wall of a stratum of ore at AH, so it hits the head wall here, and the foot wall of the stratum at AF. It says the borehole at B, so new borehole here at B, hits the head wall of the stratum at BH, and the foot wall at BF, so a head wall here, foot wall here. And it says determine the strike, dip, and thickness of the stratum. And that's what we're going to have to work out. So we know already the strike is a level line that runs across our plane, and we want to get the true length of that, and then determine the dip and the thickness of that stratum. Now, just on skew boreholes and what they are, miners uh, essentially drill holes into the ground because the, before they can actually test if the ground is worth actually mining, they need to know what is in the ground. So when they drill into the ground, they use these augers and those augers will come out and what they will reveal is the actual ground and what kind of different layers of material that is in the ground underneath. And as it comes down, uh, or as it goes down, if we think of uh, gold mining, uh, eventually as they dig down and down and down and down, uh, they eventually might hit these gold deposits in the ground. And when it comes back up, what it will reveal to us is where the gold deposit starts, which will maybe be the head wall, and then where it finishes the last sign of the gold before it all vanishes again. And that would be the foot wall. So as it comes up then, we can obviously tell how far the head wall is down from where they drilled and how far the foot wall is down. And it all depends then on the actual uh, topography of the land around it. So as miners drill down, they're obviously not always going to be drilling straight down. Sometimes they're at an angle because they're on a slope and so forth. And that is where we are going to basically use technical drawing to learn about how we are going to basically get the head wall and the foot wall, which are two parallel lines that are running across each other because these gold deposits are generally going to run in these parallel lines, but they're not always going to be parallel with the XY line. They might run at an angle like this, or this. they'll have a different inclination, which is the dip. And then, depending on that, we have the thickness, and obviously sometimes it might be from there, maybe that thick, between the head wall and the foot wall, or it might be that thick, or it might actually be quite thin. We just have to determine that, and then obviously the inclination, as I said, is the dip. And that's what we're going to be learning about today, and the actual methods to do that. So, starting off here, we have a borehole at A, uh, that is drilled down here in this angle, okay, and we have a borehole at B. And on A, it reveals uh, how far down, it drills down, and here it reveals the hip at the first point at which it hit the head wall of that mineral deposit. In this case, we'll just say it's the gold. And this is where it hit the foot wall of that point. Uh, same, another borehole at B, drilled in a different direction, uh, head wall here and foot wall down here. Now what we are going to have to do is, if we just look at it in plan, this is where they started drilling, and here in this case it looks like they've drilled off to the right, and they have. So if you imagine it, if we're looking down on the plan view of it here, this is where a person will be standing. Okay, person standing up, drilling at this point here. And what they are doing is, they're after drilling in a north-easterly direction, up here. But they're after obviously drilling into the ground in a north-easterly direction. So it went off to the right in a north-easterly direction. And in this case, another person was drilling here at this point. And they are after drilling in a roughly southwesterly direction. But it's more south than southwesterly. But it's slightly gone southwesterly down here. So it was kind of hard to tell from here. But obviously we can see the angles. One person is drilling off to the right in a north-easterly direction. One person is drilling in a southwesterly direction or south southerly direction. First thing we are going to do though. When we get one of these questions, and this is how you would attempt it is, you always, always, straight away, first off, want to join, and I'm going to use a different colour for this, we want to join our two head wall points at the two boreholes. So I'm going to join AH and BH. There. And I will also join AF and BF. Just get them there. Now, what I have there is two points on my foot wall, AF and BF, and two points on my head wall, AH and BH. If I have them in elevation, generally I would always try and find them also in my plan. So what I'm going to do is transfer those points down. So where AH is here, 
Paint onto my plan. It's there. Same with AF. Do the exact same on the opposite side. Live straight away. So that was A there. Not A there. This is AH. This is AF. Should have done it inside here. Got BH. BF. And I got borehole B here. Okay. Same thing. Join them up in our plan view. So AH joins to BH. And AF joins to BF. Now, looking at the two of them, this was the head wall. So I'll just write that above it as well. These are two points on the head wall. Doesn't mean it is exactly the head wall, but there are two points on it. And this is the foot wall. So AH is the head wall, AF foot wall down here. Now, we can see from our elevation view up here that the head wall and the foot wall, they are not touching. So they're not, they're definitely not touching. But what the, and we can also see, so obviously the head wall is up here, the foot wall is down here, they are just two points that are on it. And they are not touching. I know if we continue this on, it might look like they're touching, but they're not. Now, AH and BF down here, this is once again same thing. It looks like they're touching here in the middle, but you have to remember AH is higher than BF and AF. So what we want to do is we want to create a plane to get our strike so that we can see the dip of the angle and the inclination of the head wall and the foot wall. And to create that plane, what we're going to do, and it's the same method always, if you remember when we were doing it with the planes previously in other questions, at BH, we'd when we had a triangle up here, ABC, and we had three points, three outcrop points on our layer on our stratum. <coughs> we had to create we from B from the middle one, we did a level line across parallel to the XY line. So the exact same thing, we're gonna do the exact same step. So at BH, I'm going to do a level line across my page, which is parallel to my XY line, and parallel then to AF and BF from AH. I'm going to set up my set square parallel with that. There we go. And I'm going to do sliding set squares. And from AH, I'm going to do, and the relationship between this line and this line is that they are parallel. And what that has determined for me is it's after giving me a new point over here, which we're going to label point P. Doesn't really matter what you label it, good label of point C, doesn't really matter. So, what I want to do is if I found point P in elevation, I now want to find that in plan. So I'm going to drop that down. P is going to be down there somewhere in plan. Now, I want to find P, so I'm going to do the exact same method, parallel to AF. So AF and this, AF, BF, sorry which is up here in elevation, I went from AH parallel to AF, BF. So same thing, from AH I'm going to go a parallel AF to BF from AH. So the exact same thing in plan. So, line it up, AF and BF, and I would like to find that point right there. So once again, the relationship between this line this line is that they are parallel. And I have located point P in plan. And that point P is a very important line. I'm going to join that back to BH. And that there, that line, I'm going to use a different color here now. That line there. That is my strike line. More importantly, it is the true length. 
of my strike. Okay, now we know to be able to get the dip, we have to look out along our strike. Straight away there, we're going to set up an auxiliary, an auxiliary view looking out along that strike line. Front B. No, sliding sides first. Bring out all our points. So I want to bring down, that's BH. I'm going to bring out AF. set up an X and Y one perpendicular to that. And there we go. Always label X one, Y one. Okay. Now at this point it's just a case about locating our points. So to locate the points, if I project from the plan I'm going to take my heights from the elevation. I will just first of all continue those lines out a touch further. Okay. Now, as I said, project from the plan, you take your heights from the elevation. So for AF, I get AF and BF first. So if I want AF, if is up this high, there we go. If is here, come out to here. If is going to be there. Now, if I want BF, I'm take that height there. A bit more awkward. And locate BF down here. And the same with AH and BH. So AH is going to be up here and BH. So once again, labeling. So if this is BF, now I found BF here. I have found AF here. I have found AH here. And BH here. Okay. And to complete that question, we can check our accuracy and see how close I was. The first one. That there is two points on my foot wall. And if I am accurate, they should be parallel. So I can do sliding side squares. And we can see how close we are. Not bad, probably up by about half a millimeter since I'm using pins, but close enough. So that there is my head wall, and down here, this is my foot wall. And what I found in between them and this is very important always labeling. What I found in between them. If I extend that out there and then go perpendicular in between the two lines, and here we go. This angle inside in here that is my dip angle, and in between the head wall. And the foot wall, I found my thickness. Okay, that's how one of those questions is done. Very much kind of like skew lines, only we're talking here in this case about boreholes. So, just to recap, join your two head wall points, AH and BH, AF and BF for the foot wall. Same thing down in plan. And what we have to do is, like uh, getting the true length of any line, if it's parallel in one view, so we had our strike line up here, but wasn't the true length, it was just parallel with the XY line. So this line here, from BH over, we created, we found the point P by going parallel to AF and BF from AH, brought P down, and did the exact same thing from AH down here, 
we went parallel AF to BF, we went parallel with that line from AH, and that gave us point P in plan. And I joined point P back to BH. That gave me the true length of my strike. We looked out along the strike, set up an X1, Y1, brought out all our points, and along the X1, Y1, we, or sorry, we took the heights from the elevation for all our points. And what that helped us create then was we ended up getting the foot wall, and we ended up getting the head wall. The area in between the perpendicular distance between those two lines is the thickness, and then the angle they make with the X and Y1 is the dip. So that is how you do one of those skew borehole questions. Okay, uh, next question on skew boreholes. I decided to do this one because it's just a touch different from the last one that we did in that we are different this time we're going to take the strike line from underneath rather than above so we're going to take the strike line from the foot wall rather than the head wall and also it has a little bit of a tricky part here on the skew borehole b so we'll just get started on that i've explained what skew boreholes are now we're just going to get on to actually completing the questions when we're given a little bit of a trickier start so question four same page it says given our skew boreholes at a and b so elevation up here, A is drilled down in this direction, so it's in a westerly direction, and from our plan we can see it's in an almost a northwesterly direction. And uh, it says uh, the borehole at A reveals the top and bottom of the stratum at 35 and 15 respectively. So first thing there, uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to measure up uh, 35 and 15, and that will reveal the top and bottom surfaces of my stratum. So on A, measure up 15 and 35. So there's 15 and 35. Put little marks. So where my 15 one was. Little mark there. 35 there. And what that reveals to us then is my AH and my AF. Two points on A. That's my head wall. That's my foot wall. Now, next part of the question, it says the borehole at B reveals the top and bottom surfaces of the stratum at altitudes of 46 and 7 respectively. So, same thing on B, measure of 46 and 7. Very simple, two points. There's my BH, point in the head wall, BF point on the foot wall and we know at this stage what we have to do is we have to create our head wall and our foot wall so create the head wall AH and BH join up and the same with the foot wall AF and BF head wall foot wall Let's put in a H there and if there, head wall, foot wall. Now, what we have to do is we have to locate those points in plan. Now that's quite easy for borehole A, but it's a little bit trickier for borehole B. So just locate the A points first. So AH, so we have AH here again, and AF. And somewhere down along here, we have BH and BF. Now, the problem with that is, this skew borehole B, we can see, it looks like here it's going straight down into the ground. And it is. But, and it has a height, obviously, it's out of 46 and 7. However, in our plan, we cannot determine heights. We can only determine lengths and widths. And I can see, at skew, bore, bore, or skew borehole B, it is drilled uh, at an angle. Well, it's, but it's hard to tell from that angle because it's, we know straight away it's not actually going straight into the ground because if it was going straight into the ground we would see B as a point view whereas in this case I can see that it's actually drilled in a southerly direction now it obviously can't be drilled straight out like my pen here it's going to be at a slight angle like that if that makes sense because obviously it has to enter the ground at some point if we were drilling like this we wouldn't be drilling at all we would essentially just be holding the drill in our hand but we're going to be drilling at an angle and it's drilling in a southerly direction. Now it's a case of working out what that is. 
And to be able to work that out, we have to think back to cones here for a second to locate our points. And if I drill in this direction like this, if you imagine this is point B here, we have it here, in this case here, and this is where it's gone down into the ground. And if you imagine this is the top where it's after entering the surface, now that position is not going to change. And somewhere along that is BH and BF. BF down here, BH up here, head wall, foot wall down here. And what we have to do is we have to locate them. We cannot locate them at the moment because the two lines are contradicting each other in a sense. But if I was to rotate that, keep being in the same position and think of a cone and how a cone is generated, and I rotated it out like this until it was parallel with the XY line. What shape I'm actually making there is a cone. If I was to keep going around, it would actually make a cone. So I'm going to use that analogy to complete this question. And to be able to do that, I have where the bottom of it already is. So from the top of B, I'm going to rotate it. Rotate until it is parallel with the X, Y line. So, our B is there, going straight across, and at that point there, it's parallel with the X, Y line. Now, I've just basically taken my borehole, and instead of drilling it in a southerly direction, now drilling it in an easterly direction, just to be able to locate the points, if we think of a cone, bring it up here, so as I said, instead of a southerly direction, we're now drilling in an easterly direction. So I'm going to join it up here. And this is literally just to help me locate my points. So that is now my new B borehole. So if I bring F over here, BF and BH, and rotate them down, that's where they are on the foot wall, and that's where it is on the head wall. Now, as I said, this was my fake borehole. I want to get them back to my original borehole. So like I did at the very start when I rotated this way, I'm just gonna rotate them back. So it's just working backwards. So same thing, from B, start with this guy. And onto this guy. And there we go, very simple. Just a little bit of understanding in that one and how we use cones to our advantage. So if that's BH, there I've got BH down here. That's the head wall. And I've got BF over here. That's the foot wall. So we know at this stage then, I'm going to get back to joining them up. So AH joins to BH. And AF joins to BF. Okay. Head wall, foot wall, same thing. Head wall, foot wall. I'll actually just put a H there as well. And an F there. Okay. Now at this stage, what we want to do is we want to get a strike line. Because we have to determine the dip, the, uh, sorry, the strike, the dip, and the thickness of the stratum of ore. So, how do we create a strike line? Well, first of all, a strike line is got by creating planes. So, at AF, I am going to do a level line. This time I said I was going to do it off my foot wall. So I'm going to do a level line parallel with the XY line. I'm going to do a level line from AF. And from BF, I am going to do a line parallel to AHBH. So I'm going to set up a line parallel to AHBH in my elevation. I'm going to do that off of BF. There we go. And the relationship between that line there and that line is that they are parallel. And what I'm after locating is I'm after locating a point P right here. Okay. Now, if I locate the point P in elevation, I'm going to now try and locate it in plan. So, just follow the same method we did in elevation. Obviously, P has to be straight below it in plan. Somewhere down along there is going to be my point P. And same concept. 
from BF, like I did up here, I went parallel to AH, BH. My AH, BH in this case is over here in this direction, and I'm going to do the exact same from BF. Parallel to AH, BH in plan, going to go off of BF. So, same thing, sliding sets first. Setting up the 45 one. Parallel. Comes over. And that, once again, this is parallel with that. And what I have after finding is my new P in plan. And that P in plan, I'm going to put this one just in purple now, different color. That P joined to AF, so same thing down here, joins to AF as well. So, P joins cross to AF. Right. And as I said there before, that line there, that is my true length of my strike. Okay, true length of my strike. Strike line up here, but that is the true length of the strike. Because the reason for that is, is any line that is parallel to the XY line in your elevation is going to give you a true length in your plan. It is parallel to one of the principal planes. It means it is true length in the other view. So parallel, parallel, that means it's a true length down here in plan. Okay, now, rest of the question, we've done this before, we've done the last question as well. What we are going to do now is we're going to look out along our strike to be able to determine the dip and the thickness of our stratum. So, setting up a long strike, look out along it, from all the points, so I'll do the same from BH, same from AF, same from AH, and BF. And now, setting up an X1, Y1, perpendicular to it. Just trying to keep myself enough room to be able to fit it on the page. So, X1, Y1, and to project from the plan, we take our heights from the elevation. So I'm going to take my two A's first. I'm going to take AF and AH. So AF here. Find AF down here. That was out along my strike. Because I now see my strike. Technically my strike there, that line right there, I'm seeing it as a point view and it's like it's going into the page. So that is my AF. Now I'm going to find my AH. AH is down here. Same with BH and BF. So that one was 46. So BH. And the last one, BF. A bit more of an awkward one. Okay, very simple. Labels now. So that one is BH. This one is AF, this guy is BF, this guy is AH. So what we have to do then at that very point is we have now got to join. And the little trick here is line up the first two. So I've got BH and AH lined up there. And what I would do then is, just to check my accuracy, I would line up the other one, and just to make sure that they were fitting in. And if they're not, if they're off a little bit, I'm using pens here now, so I'm a little bit out. But, if they're off a little bit, just make it work. And right there now, if I was just to extend that down, and to extend this down, and do a perpendicular line in between them, That's a little bit, sorry. Just extend that there. What I've found in here is my thickness. Thick. And then what I've found in here 
that angle created inside and there is my dip. Question complete.